Hello again, and welcome to another Time Sticking YouTube video. Today, we're going to be discussing the origins of timekeeping and what led to modern clocks. So stick with us through this intro, and we're gonna go through that with you today. Now, a recently viewed meme here at Times Ticking asked the question, how did the original clockmakers make clocks if they didn't have clocks themselves? Well, before mechanical movements were in town squares, before countless watchmakers and manufacturers dotted the globe, before laboratories around the world began measuring the movement of atoms for atomic timekeeping, there was the sun and shadows cast on the ground. As it went, following patterns in the cosmos and relating them to our daily lives led our ancient ancestors to mapping the cycle of each day, month, and year. As well, there were loads of rudimentary mechanical methods in timekeeping that eventually led to our more sophisticated modern measurements. The invention of the original clock is hard to nail down, although the modern clock began with verge escapement movements in the 15th century and was later improved by the 17th century, other timekeeping devices date back much further. With origins attributed to ancient Mesopotamia, the first clock-like machine was in development around 2000 BC. Aside from the old Sumerians giving us a blossoming sexagesimal or base 60 system around this time, other Mesopotamian cultures began using water flow to tell time. As a note, these BC dates should be taken with some grain of salt. Although they're incredibly accurate, there is new archaeological evidence coming out yearly surrounding the subject. In fact, what are currently referred to as water clocks were commonly used in ancient Babylon and then Egypt by the 16th century BC. The water clock is a technology that leaked its way into China, Greece, and India. In these ancient days, the Greeks referred to their water clocks as clepsydra. These liquid-based devices used inflow and outflow basins to measure elapsed time via altered water levels. Essentially, this technology was just pouring water to gauge units of time. In Old World Egypt, the water clock also had another companion, the obelisk. This measuring tool functioned similarly to ancient time sticks in India and Tibet and sundials. The Egyptians used their obelisks to bifurcate their days into two 12-hour segments. If that doesn't sound familiar, just think not military time in today's terms. As Egyptian civilization developed, this technology evolved with the sundial, a tool used to measure the workday of slaves at the time. This piece of tech, featuring a gnomon casting its shadow, had to be recalibrated with each new season. Aside from this inconvenience, the sundial was an effective time teller. As time went, the sundial was eventually adopted by the Greeks as well, and more popular illustrations of the sundial today tend to be Grecian due to its common usage there. In terms of the sundial, since shadows weren't always readily abundant, especially during inclement weather, and water wasn't always abundantly available as a resource for water clocks, other forms of ancient clock tech emerged from other older civilizations. Two examples that stand out in particular are the candlestick clock and the hourglass. Being the more common of the two, the hourglass is still used as a symbol for the passage of time to this day. Being much akin to its water clock predecessor, the hourglass uses volumes of matter dispersed between two chambers to show the relative passage of time. Although this form of clock tech wasn't commonly seen until the 14th century, it still has some practical use in modern civilization. If nothing else, Milton Bradley has done a great job of using it for board games. In some contrast, the candlestick clock utilized a different method from the hourglass and water clocks. If the name is any indication, this time-telling device required a candle to measure the passage of time. With these timekeepers, a candle would be lit beside an evenly spaced series of markings. As the candle burned down, the height of the candle, relative to the markings, would show the passage of time. Considering other timekeeping methods required outdoor use, this clever piece of ancient clock tech was more pragmatic during inclement weather. As well, today we use stratification in rocks and the decay rate of atoms to measure relative time in the age of ancient things. So having an easy to follow visual decay really isn't too far out of place even in our modern age. Since it's difficult to see what individuals initiated clock invention in ancient days, it's hard to pinpoint a true inventor of clocks. However, as time moved through the AD instead of BC portion of human history, more names and innovations emerged. Gears, weights, and water escapement movements were constructed by various cultures from about the 3rd century AD to the 11th century AD. 
By the 14th century, European clockmakers brought the verge escape movement to the table. This key innovation helped clockmaking flourish, utilizing a balance wheel to help keep time moving forward. The Verge Escapement movement was eventually scaled down to build the first pocket watches as a result. Eventually, this design was improved upon further by Robert Hooke in the mid-17th century. If there's any candidate for the first clock inventor title, it would be Mr. Hooke. In 1656, he introduced the Anchor Escapement or Pendulum Clock to the world. This oscillating movement set a new precedent in timekeeping that would be evolved upon and utilized until the 1930s. The beginning and middle of the 20th century saw the advent of quartz crystal oscillation movements as well as atomic timekeeping. Although these technologies were relegated to laboratories in the beginning, they became the standard that we utilize today. And even though they may come across as space agey or so new that they're detached from their much older predecessors, these modern timekeepers run on the same principles as their ancient relatives. So, whether your quartz movement is oscillating, or you're checking the time on an atomic wristwatch, you're part of a time-honored tradition. And even though the very first clockmaker remains unnamed, their legacy lives on in our lives today. Hello, and thanks for watching our YouTube video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and you can find similar videos right here. For more new and interesting content from Time Sticking on our channel, please subscribe at the link here. And for more information about wristwatch repair and watch maintenance generally, you can find us at timesticking.com. Thanks so much and have a great day.